Hello, you lot. How's it going? I had a comment about uh, someone had found a Savage 25 engine with a piston and a line or whatever, and they said the piston won't go all the way through the liner. It stops about three quarters of the way up. What's wrong with it? Why won't it go all the way up? Why, why is it broken like this? And I said, no, 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 no. It's not broken. And they said, can I explain it? So let's do a little video of it. Well, that's what I'm doing now. I mean, why am I telling you that? Oh, you can see I'm doing that. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, this is going to be my demonstration piece. This is a piston there and a liner. Now, this one is a Sonova one, so it's going to be a lot tighter. It's actually dead. I mean, you can see where it overheated quite a lot. And... Um, <clears throat> A bit of a score there, but it's a good example. So the piston should never go all the way through the liner. The way nitro engines work is a bit different to ordinary petrol and diesel engines. So petrol and diesel engines have rings. This piston, for anyone interested, is out of a motorbike. Um, trying to remember now what is bloody more than 20 years ago that I took this out. It, I think it was a, what was it? I think it was a 600 something or another. I, I can't remember. It was um, me and a mate, we uh, had a bike and all that. Anyway, we blew it up and that's what happened. <laughs> so we had to do a bit of a rebuild. Anyway, my point is petrol and diesel engines, they have rings. They have a compression ring and they have an oil ring. Some have one ring, some have four rings five rings you know you, some of them have loads of rings some only have one or two but they have rings and by rings you can still see a little part this one's obviously not you know it's all broken off in there look. but you can still see a little part of the ring there there's there it is and they just go around the piston and you can remove them and you can replace the rings because when they wear out they'll start to let oil through and you'll lose a bit of compression so sometimes you can get away with taking the old rings off and putting new rings on and they create a seal around the bore around the cylinder because they spring outwards and they create a seal to stop oil from getting into the combustion chamber and also to keep compression on top of the piston and not let it seep past down into the block <clears throat> which means that the piston on a petrol or diesel engine will more or less go Where's it gone? Will more or less go all the way to the top of the cylinder. Imagine this is a cylinder on a petrol engine because this would have been a four stroke petrol. The piston will go more or less flush to the top of the cylinder on a petrol or diesel engine. However, nitro engines, they don't have any rings. You'll notice, all right, there's little grooves on this particular one some nitro pistons are completely smooth these because these are racing this is a, a piston that's designed to race because uh, what it just is so it has little grooves but there are no rings that you can remove and replace you can see there where that gouge has gone through it there's no ring there it's just a small little groove two of them so in order to create the seal to keep the combustion at the top of the piston and not let it go down past into the block. They have something called pinch, which is where basically, in very, well, it's not basically at all, it's just, it's extremely simple. I don't know why I said basically. Um, the liner is tapered slightly, not a lot, because if it was too much, obviously it, would, it wouldn't let it go through at all. It's tapered towards the top, so the piston can go up the bottom, and then as it starts to rise up towards the top there, it, the, the, the gap of which it's going up, you know, the cylinder itself, gets smaller and smaller and pinches the piston, hence why it's called pinch, because it pinches the piston. <laughs> and that's what creates the seal, because the piston is physically rubbing up against the inside of the liner <clears throat> you can just about see this this liner and this piston i've got around about um, about an hour's run time on it about half an hour running it in and about half an hour 
actually using it after it ran, after it was run in before the C clip fell out and ruined it. So I had to buy a new piston and a new liner. But anyway, after about an hour's runtime, you can see there there's a, a groove line, which is where the piston's gone up to, and then it stops. You know, that, that's the line of where it goes to. That's where it's worn. You can see the score marks there. So let me put the camera in the tripod and I can show you. Now there will definitely be people that would explain this differently, blah, blah, blah. Hopefully people that are like that will put comments in this video to explain it their way. And then, you know, everyone can understand it and get their own understanding from all the different ways. But this is... Well, there is no two ways about it. This is how it works. I've got the proof in front of you. Anyway, so you've got the liner and you've got the piston. This particular one is extremely tight because, again, it's a Nova. The tolerances are a lot less. You'll find with an RTR engine, an RTR engine being one like this, which is why I've got it here as an example, this is just your ordinary engine that you'd get with a ready-to-run car. The compression and the tolerances between the piston and the liner are a lot less or should I say a lot more I suppose it's a lot more isn't it there's more tolerance yeah there is there's more tolerance anyway the gap's bigger so the piston will go up and down the liner easier but it will also it should still stop about three quarters of the way roughly there it should stop if it goes all the way up the engine's worn out it's, it's not going to run it might run but it won't run very well because the combustion but a fire that's happening on top of the piston is going to be seeping down past the piston into the block and you're just not going to get your power because the power is when the combustion it fires on the fuel fires on top of the piston and it forces the piston down the cylinder down the liner and that's what drives the crankshaft which then drives the wheels if all of that fire is blowing past the piston and going into the crankcase or the block is what i would call it all the power is being lost and the piston is just going to flow down and up. You know, it's not being forced down. It's just going to go... It's not going to do anything. So, even on an RTR engine, it should go to about there and it should get really difficult to push it that further, that bit further. You will get it there because it needs to go all the way, more or less, to there in order to actually do a full stroke. But to push it with your hands, it should stop about there somewhere and it should get really, really, really stiff. And this is why it's important to make sure that you warm your engine up once you've started it. Let it tick over. Let it warm up. Otherwise, it will start wearing out the top of your piston, or the sides of your piston, I should say, and the liner a lot quicker than it would do otherwise. And in my old age nowadays, I do warm up every... Most, every, most of the time, I warm my engines up before I even start them now. I never used to because I didn't care, I suppose. But now, I have to work a lot harder to buy engines. I think to myself, I don't want to waste money buying another engine if I wear it out quicker, because I'll have to go and do some more work. And I don't want to keep going and doing more work. I want to do as little work as possible and have as much good stuff as possible. Anyway, so if you're into wasting money, then of course, don't warm your engines up, let them wear out and go and buy a new one. But if you don't like wasting money, Treat your engine properly. Warm it up with a heat gun or an engine heater first. So this particular one, it'll only go to about there. That is, that is literally as far as I can get that to go. It just will not go any further than about there by hand. Now, <clears throat> this is the difference between... I know, by the, way, by the way, I know this is scored, and I know it's dead. Some of you are going to say, we don't want scored, so what do you expect? It's not going to go in properly, blah, blah, blah. Bollocks. This is the difference between an engine which is designed to be raced. The tolerances are smaller, so there'll be more power. Less power is going to be wasted, because even on an RTR engine, some power is wasted, because a little bit of it does seep past, because the tolerances are bigger. So, 
when you've got one of these engines, you need to heat them up first because what happens when you heat them up with a heat gun or an engine heater? We all know with heat comes expansion. I've taken the head off of this one so you can see the piston and the liner. And if I turn this, you can see there, that's, that's as far as it goes. That is as far as, this is a ready, this is an RTI engine, that's as far as that goes, that's top. Now, with heat comes expansion. With coldness comes contraction. So, when the weather is cold, your liner is contracted, it's shrunk, only minutely. We're talking minute measurements, but enough, because the tolerances are so small, it's enough which is why this piston won't go all the way in like that. If I was to warm this up now and wear a pair of gloves and hold it and heat this liner up good and proper, this piston would go more or less three quarters of the way up, as it should do. And so my point is, what I'm trying to get to is, it's important to warm your engines up with a heat gun because if you try and force them, the piston is going to get forced up there it's going to start wearing away the inside of the liner. You might even gouge out a great big chunk of it, depending on how bad it is. And also, you've got bearings and whatnot else that won't like being run cold. They'll wear out a lot quicker. I mean, you can see by the wear on this bearing, it only had about an hour's runtime on it. And before that C-clip, that circlip came out and absolutely destroyed it. So pretty gutting there, but it's just one of those things. It's just one of those things. <clears throat> so there we go. Hopefully, I've explained it in a manner of which is useful to a lot of you. Everybody learns differently. Everybody understands things differently. Some people like complicated things. When it comes to simple things, they can't grasp it. Other people like simple things and can't grasp complicated things. I like simplicity, and I like to explain things as simply as possible. So, if you've got a nitro engine and your piston, by hand, when you're doing this, it won't go all the way up, it's fine. Don't worry about it. It's normal. It's how it's supposed to be. Put the engine together. Sometimes you've got your engine fully together. Glow plug is out. There's no compression. And you can't, you grab it onto that flywheel and you can't turn it all the way to do a full turn. Don't force it. It's because the tolerances are small on that particular engine. If you force it, you're going to do some damage. So what you need to do, stop. Go back on the turn till it's at the bottom, the BDC, bottom dead centre. Get a heat gun or an engine heater or some method of heating up a hairdryer. Go and nick your missus's hairdryer, girlfriend's hairdryer, whatever. Heat up the engine. Give it a good few minutes of heat. And then try and turn it again. You will find, unless it's broken, of course, this is a major problem with it, but you will find that it will free up and you'll be able to do a full turn. And you, would do, you won't be doing any damage. So whatever you do, don't force your engine. Or if you've got your piston and liner out like this and you're just playing around with it. Don't force it up there if it's a good one. Because you'll damage it. <clears throat> it's normal, it's fine, it's how it works. So to reiterate and quickly summarise. With a nitro engine, they use a thing called pinch. The, pit, the liner pinches the piston. That's how it creates a seal. Because it gets smaller and smaller. There's no gap around the end. There's no gap around the piston inside the liner for anything to escape down because the tolerances are so small you know and when it's worn out your, your piston goes all the way up it, it's the power is escaping with a petrol engine or a diesel engine the piston will go up and down freely the the bore is not tapered or if it is it's a minute amount but they're not usually tapered much um, they use rings to keep the seal so there we go Hopefully that's been useful to you. Now I've got to, I've got to say this because otherwise people will get the ump and I know there's 
engines are extremely complicated. Well, they're not extremely good. They're, they're complicated. They're not easy to design. People who make and design engines are very clever people. So what I've just explained is the basic and in the nutshell way of how they work. So anyone who wants to put the proper tolerances, dimensions, reasons, anything in comments, please do, because me and other people would like to read them and possibly learn some more stuff. But in a nutshell, that's how they work. Hopefully, now, most of you can understand and has answered a few questions about why your nitro engine does what it does and is what it is. There we go. Merry Christmas. Treat people nicely. Treat people how you'd like to be treated. And we should have a nice, happy life. Serio? Bloody Jesus. Serio? That's an antenna for a ham radio. <laughs> I'll see you later. Cheerio, you lot. All the best.